Okay, this is going to be a little bit of an introduction for this video on making a ball with a, a bench lathe. Greg and I spent quite a bit of time, I, I picked a really hard piece of stone, which I didn't realize it was quite as hard as it was. So, in lieu of that, so I don't bore people to death, which I was doing a good job on myself, um, I, in this video there's going to be sections where I either double the speed and possibly triple the speed so we don't come to boredom. I just want people to see that you can actually get a true perfect ball by using a core drill on the bench lathe. So we're going to finish the ball and then I'll have my video done. Anywho, yeah, I'm, this next video is going to be for people that want to make spheres, balls, beads, whatever. I went to China in 1987 to help put together a joint venture, which was basically a scam by the Chinese. Um, set up a cutting shop in a very rural part of China. They already had a somewhat of a turquoise production when we got over there. The, one of the things that I saw when I started walking around where they were, were doing their cutting and stuff is they were making balls by the, I won't say millions, I'll easily say hundreds of thousands. They had maybe, maybe five or eight workers that all they did all day long was sit and make balls and then they'd drill them into bees. There was literally baskets this big around and maybe two feet deep, They're full of balls. And, and I'll show you some of the balls now because I, I rescued um, balls that I didn't, couldn't have, they didn't have the heart to let um, them drilling because they did such a poor job of drilling. You know, one of the things I, and I don't remember where I read it, I read so many books on China and things on, on the internet on China. One of the things in the Asian culture, and I, I don't think it's only Chinese, they have some kind of, you know, it's hard to call it a spiritual thing, but they have a, an affinity toward a ball. Um, yeah, and I can't remember, I told Greg I was gonna to try to look it up and I didn't do it, so we're all guessing now. Okay, these were my first experience with Chinese balls. When the Chinese turquoise first hit the market in 87, Tucson of 87 is when I first saw it. The gentleman that had the, the turquoise there, both rough and then these balls, um, he was so angry that he hadn't sold anything. He was closing his shop or closing his hotel room down. And we had to bag the guy to let him let us in the room because we were so anxious to find out what we could about this new new source of turquoise. Anyway, make a long story short, the guy ended up coming to Gallup. Uh, within about three weeks and we all bought quite a few of the balls from him along with some rough, rough turquoise and these these are vintage 1987 um, somewhat crudely made Chinese ball beads, Chinese turquoise ball beads. You know and I, I learned from watching the workers, they had anywhere from a treadmill to turn a, a shaft and then they actually had some electric, electric motor driven um, shafts. The, the treadmill ones had two boards with a V-slot cut in it spread apart from each other and they were using animal fat as a uh, lubricant on the shaft. Anyway, I'm going to show you basically the technique they were using, but with more contemporary um, tools. You know, he, we're going to end up making a, 
uh, rhyolite bead or rhyolite ball to start with. This is a, a ball that I made some time ago and then made it into a bead. We call it Uranus. Anywho, I'm going to make a ball roughly this size. I, it should go pretty quick. I'll get the ball made and then I'll show you how, how we drill it. So we're going to cut right now and I'm going to get set up for the ball. Okay, this is a piece of New Mexico rhyolite. It's, this is very hard. Here's another piece of New Mexico rhyolite. This is a little bit softer. It's still a hard rhyolite. You can find other Rhyolite is more of a welded tooth. Um, I was just talking to Greg about going over where we can go find some of this stuff. The nice thing about this particular piece is the, the nice, bright, kind of bright colors in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a, as close to a cube out of this as I possibly can. The measurement on it one weighs 19 millimeters and the other weighs 20 and a half millimeters. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and set that, lock that, and just make myself a line. And then I'm going to just go over to the saw and I'll cut, lay this down on the table and cut this so I have on almost a cube. Oh, you're going to use the foot pedal. Ah, oh, Eureka! just a rough cube. You know, I'm going to leave it like this. I could take it over to the big grinder and grind some corners off and this, that, and the other, but I just want to show you the quickest way I know how to make a ball. Okay, when I had the diamond tool company, I had people send me samples of core drills. You can buy core drills on eBay for super cheap. And I was using these to re restore, I guess that would be one way, uh, ger German swirl marbles, hand, old German swirl marbles. So what I'm going to do now is the maximum size that ball that that thing can be is 19 millimeters. So I have to start out smaller than 19 millimeters. So I'm going to dig through this get the core draw I'm going to use, get it set up, and then we'll start making a ball. Okay, I'm going, maximum size on this ball is going to be 19 millimeters because of the measurements. This is a 17 millimeter core drill. There's not much on the inside. If this doesn't seem to work real good, I'll change out. But basically what the Chinese were doing in their machines is they'd have a piece of what looked like stainless steel tubing and they they had one person taking something like this nuggets mostly and they they basically try to make it kind of a a sphere to start with and then they throw it in a thing and then they they go over where mostly these women were working and they'd have the thing spinning and they had grit, corundum grit. The pipe would be spinning, they'd be turning the thing with one hand and then they'd be sprinkling corundum grit on it as they were doing it. The nice thing about core drills is you, you don't need any corundum grit.
Okay, I, I just took off some high spots. And like I said, I've never taken it from a uh, cube straight to a ball. So over on the grinder, I took some high spots off. I'm gonna fire it up again. If I'm not happy, I'll go back over to the grinder again. core drill in, in here because that one was cutting kind of slow. I was going to go over to the grinder and try to, you know, get some more of the stuff off here, but if, if you look at this thing, it's, it's balancing out. You know, every face is balancing. Where it's narrower, the, the faces are bigger, as far as narrower this way. Where it's wider, the faces are smaller, so I, I've got a brand new core drill in here, and I'm going to go ahead and continue on. I figure that worse, I'll see if I can't figure out how to make a high speed part of this video. And, you know, I thought I was um, not having enough confidence in myself and what I'm trying to show people to go over there to the grinder, so I'm just going to continue on. In this core drill, internal hole size is 17 millimeters. You just can't hold it in one spot or you're going to get a terrible gouge.
it's starting to get <clears throat> a bit of a shape. It's the widest area is this way. The narrowest is this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going around mostly on these two widest sides. <laughs> this thing moving it doesn't have any choice to make a perfect it's perfect As you can see, it's starting to get down to the thickest part is going to be a full arc here real soon. You know, they obviously sphere making machines are better suited. I'm mostly doing this for people that don't have stuff like that.
great time. Jeez, what a pain in the ass. The rock's a little harder than you thought. Got you a nice soft one. Nobody said. 
cutting rocks was quick. <laughs> come up with ideas that you think might be good and sometimes they're not so good. I just spent another hour and a half on this ball. It's not quite down to where it's totally round because you can see those little dots on it. The two little dots show on it, be totally opposite one another. In that, I, I had I put some magic marker on it and then started finishing it. And I just got so bored yesterday that I just finally said, uh, you know, I'll leave the dots there. I will show you, I can't remember the exact size of this when I started. It was 19 point some millimeters at the narrowest. In fact, that is the narrowest, so let me measure that. So 19 point one three millimeters dot to dot well if you turn it just a little bit it goes to 19.18 millimeters and I, you know no matter where you measure on this it's 19.19 19.17 the 19.18 if i go to inch it's 755, that's 755 thousandths of an inch. So if I move over a little bit, 
It's 755 again. I spin it around a little bit. It's 755. That's within one thousandth of an inch to, to prove how perfect of a sphere you can make. Um, unfortunately for me, but fortunately for him, my cameraman is getting ready to go spend some weeks in Colorado finding cool rocks. I will go ahead and finish making this perfectly round and then when Greg gets back from his adventure, I'll go ahead and do the finish work down to pre-polish. I am going to make a bead out of this, so I'll show people how to set up for bead to drill it so it's a perfect dead center in the, in the actual sphere. But for right now, that's pretty much what we're going to do with this ball in this video. Hope you enjoyed.